see that. That's All right, we live? We are live. Right, welcome everybody. Thanks for your patience while we dealt with some technical difficulties. You'd think we'd be used to that by now, but we're not. So thanks for hanging in there. Um, I'm Bridget, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm the marketing manager with Lake Geneva Country Meets, and I'm going to be hosting this fun event tonight. So you are in for a treat. We have Nick with Lake Geneva Country Meets. Hi, Nick. And Hello. Nelly with Grand Geneva. Hey, Nelly. Hey, how are you guys doing? And Nelly, it looks like you've got a culinary team with you. Who do you have tonight? I do. So let me tell you, I, uh, I brought up the secret weapons tonight. Tonight, I have my two key chefs. I have Marvy, who is one of my sous chefs um, at the resort and my fiance. Um, and Jacob, our seven-year-old, who is our soon-to-be future sous chef until oh. he decides he's going to become a doctor. He's a Say hello, guy. Jacob. Hi. Hi, guys. Welcome. So... You guys, these two, Nick and Nellie, are two of the key people that help set up Lake Geneva's Festival of Wine. So if you've not attended that in the past, it normally would be kicking off on Friday. Uh, but since we're not doing that this year, we thought we would instead get these two together and do a little cook-off here. Um, so what they've done is picked a couple dishes that are going to pair with a wine that would have been at Festival of Wine. Um, Nick, tell us about the wine tonight. What are we pairing? So we have Black Stallions, Los Carneros, Napa Valley, Pinot Noir. Black Stallion has been at Festival Wine every year, a great supporter. And this is a lovely Pinot Noir, medium body. Uh, you get some kind of cherry, strawberry aromatics. <sighs> lovely. Uh, you can buy it here at Lake Shiva Country Meats if you want some. But also it's got really great acidity, which makes it a great food pairing wine a little bit of kind of herbaceousness, a uh, little bit of savoriness that you'd expect out of a cooler climate Pinot Noir. So it's just an awesome food pairing wine. And I thought this would be a great wine to pick for Nellie and I to make two different dishes and see what you guys think is uh, the most delicious looking dish. So chef, what did you pick tonight for your dish to go with this? So the winning dish, I mean, the dish that- Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> that was weird. Snack talk. The, Nah, nah, nah. It's not a good fun, right? So the dish that um uh, that I picked to do tonight is um, we're gonna do a uh, seared pork belly, and we're gonna put that over the top of what I like to call a uh, sweet potato velvet. Um, I like to call it sweet potato velvet. It's a sweet potato puree, but I call it a velvet because it's got a beautiful, nice, uh, smooth velvet finish to it. Um, uh, once you uh, once you get to taste it, um, we're gonna put the pork belly right over the top of that. Once we get a sear on it. That's going to get finished with some beautiful Brussels sprouts that we're going to fry off. Um, and uh, as we uh, go through, I'll show you guys all the steps of uh, what are the ingredients in it. And then we're going to finish that off with a beautiful um, apple. And Nick, I did find fennel. And found apple fennel. And fennel um, slaw that's going to go right over the top of that. <laughs> well, I do have to say a quick thank you. Um, that dish sounds awesome. Before we dive into what Nick is making, Nelly, you have an awesome culinary team, but Nick, he's got some fans on Facebook already. So oh, yes. we've got a couple people that have commented cheering for Nick. Okay. And I want to say hi to everyone listening. Someone, we've got Tyler who even bailed on Luke Combs live feed. So thank you for that. This is definitely going to be better. <laughs> so Nick, what are you making? So I'm making some uh, seared pork chops with uh, Spanish style sofrito sauce, uh, which is tomatoes, onion, garlic, uh, olive oil, and I add a little bit of green or uh, red pepper to it just for a little bit more color, a little bit more crunch. We'll serve it over some rice with some uh, chopped parsley, not quite as fancy, not quite as well balanced, but uh, I'm going to get started because I think mine's going to take a little bit longer. I got a pan of olive oil going right here nice and hot. I have a couple pork chops and we're going to get these in. These are one inch thick pork chops that we got going. And this is just a cast iron skillet. We'll get the three in, the fourth one. Uh, I dry brine these. You want to season them with salt, pepper, and a little bit of paprika. A lot of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and then a uh, nice amount of paprika. And we're just going to get a hard sear on each side to get them going. Okay, That's so you're both doing pork, why? Well, pork and pinot go together like a few other things. Pinot Noir has this really savory, earthy note, uh, especially in cooler climates like Carneros in California, Burgundy in France, Otago in New Zealand, uh, some Willamette Valley, Central Oregon. 
and pork is a very savory meat. So you get uh, the nice savoriness of the pork with the savoriness of a Pinot Noir. And also if you get a good pork chop, like this is the one I'm not going to cook, but you can see there's a nice fat cap right there. Uh, the acidity in the Pinot Noir here is perfectly cuts through that fat. So it's really nice pairing. Chef, why do you uh, like Pinot Noir with pork? Uh, exactly for the exact same reasons, you know. It's uh, pork, uh, the, the pork, the 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 fattiness of the pork and the and the flavors of the Pinot Noir really balance one another out. Um, the the um, almost yumminess of the Pinot Noir and the blend uh, really balances out and cuts through the fatness, the acidity of the Pinot Noir really cuts through the fattiness of the pork, and they really work with one another really well. So that's why I pick the pork belly. And um, I picked the pork belly, and I actually, I'm almost going to, I'm going to pan fry the pork belly. But prior to pan frying it, I boiled it. So I boiled my pork belly. Um, I boiled the pork belly with a little bit of onions, garlics, clove, uh, bay leaf, and uh, a little bit of salt and brown sugar. Um, I boiled it for about an hour and a half. And if you guys can see that right in there, you can see that beautiful cap on the pork belly. And I picked this up with, uh, I actually picked this up from Nick as well. So we're, I'm going to do a nice, really tight score over the top of it. I'm going to season it with a little bit of Chinese five spice, which is really going to um, enhance the um, the wine itself, and then season it with a little more salt as well. Um, and then we're going to put that into the cast iron skillet that has a little bit of uh, oil blend um, in it. So then we get a beautiful, nice sear over the top of it, and then the inside is going to be really, uh, it's going to have a nice little soft bite to it. Okay, so Nelly. Um... I do, I don't want to leave you out here. Uh, we do have some fans on Facebook of Team Nelly. And um, we really have some fans that love your aprons, your whole, your matching team, okay? So <laughs> good luck on the aprons. But can you <laughs> tell some of our friends that might not know a little bit more about Five Spice, what's in it and, and how it's going to work with everything else in the dish? All right, so my my is about to jump in and give you guys a little bit on the... Uh, and the little five spice that we have that we uh, that we have here and that we're using today, All right? For our five spice here actually got a fennel seed, uh, star anise, ginger, cloves, and cinnamon mixture to them. It's uh, a typical um, five spice that you you usually get from the store. Great. And, and Nelly, um, we have a question from Cassandra O'Brien, who, by the way, is on Team Nick and Team Nelly, and she's wondering why you're um, boiling the belly. I boil the belly to help make it tender, because otherwise belly takes quite some bit, quite a bit of time to cook. So, you know, um, when you cook belly, um, usually when I if I cook belly, I'll bake it in the oven for about three and a half to four hours at about 225 degrees to really break that down and help it um, get really nice and tender. Um, so with this being, I was doing it in about 30 minutes, this is the Asian way of doing it. Actually, um, my brother-in-law, Oliver, what's the dish called that you guys do um, when you guys boil it and then you fry it again? Pata, crispy pata. Crispy pata. Um, and you guys just do it with pig's foot, right? Yeah. Usually, it's usually done with the, huh. with, with the, with, with the pig's foot, and um, they boil it. So um, I use the same process with the belly, because it helps tenderize it. Okay. And then it allows me to just give it the same beautiful sear so that the skin is nice and crispy, and it's nice and tender on the inside. Sounds awesome. Nick, how is your searing coming on? Searing's coming along. You can see the one side is, uh, is done. Look at that. We got a nice color on it. Medium high heat. You don't want to go super, super high with olive oil because it'll uh, get ruined and taste really gross. That sofrito is a really traditional Spanish sauce. Uh, usually I use vegetable oil to sear these, but the sauce calls for olive oil. The Spaniards are pretty uh, pretty intense that it needs olive oil. They don't always include garlic. I uh, usually like to kind of honor the recipe. So uh, using olive oil is essential for this recipe because you want to keep it the way it was written because uh, it is a very traditional Spanish recipe. But yeah, so medium high heat. We'll get that other side seared off. And then we can uh, pull these out and start our sofrito sauce. It's a, it's a one pot recipe, which if you've ever listened to our Dinner Plus Drinks podcast, you know, Nick and Bridget love a one pot recipe. We love a recipe that requires less cleanup. <laughs> So much easier. So I do have to say, when Chef said he's making a five spice pork belly, I got really, really angry. I was like, Chef, you magnificent son of a. Uh, <laughs> but 
think of all the cleanup. You only have one tan. <laughs> But like all you get that star anise, the fennel, the cinnamon, like all these aromatics are just like a perfect pairing for Pinot Noir. Because you go with Asian food, and usually you think of like Rieslings and things like that for your pairing. Uh, something aromatic, something of high acidity. But if you like red wine, Pinot Noir is just an amazing pairing for, for Asian food. And that's the cool thing about Festival of Wine is you get to go around the entire ballroom at Grand Geneva and try wine from around the world with food pairings from around the world that you maybe didn't think of. Uh, we What did we do with the Bockwurst last year, Chef? We did some German Riesling, some different things with the Bockwurst with like some spatzel and stuff. Yeah, we did some, we, we did a uh, whole grain mustard spatzel and um, uh, we did, I, I'm not mistaken, we did a crowd with that as well. Okay, guys, I want to take another question from our friend Diane. Hi, Diane. Good to see you. Well, I guess good to see you typing to us. I hope you're well. Um, Nick, we'll give this to the butcher. Diane wants to know the difference between pork belly and pork chop. So pork belly is just that, you know, this little uh, fatty thing I got right here. It is literally your belly. That's what you make bacon out of if you smoke it and cure it. Uh, pork chops are right back here. It's your back muscles. So pork chops, you go, uh, think of them as a T-bone, but for a, a pig, more or less. Um, you can get really great flavor. You have to remember every cut of meat you eat is a muscle on an animal. So the more work they get, the more flavor, but the less tender. Pork chops are a really good cut that has a little bit of work, so a nice amount of flavor, but not too much work, so still tender. Um, so pork chops, direct heat. Grill them, not too much fat, because they get a little bit more work. Uh, or broil, pan fry, whatever. Whereas the pork belly, it's just belly muscle, pig stand on pork feet. You're not doing crunches every day, so a lot of fat. Uh, you got to cook it low and slow to break down all that fat. So it makes great bacon, makes great, uh, little fried dishes, great little pot sticker type. Of thing. But that's that's the big difference right there. It's two different muscles, one from right here and one from back here. I hope you liked Nick pointing out the pork belly, Diane. <laughs> okay, Team Nelly, what is your smallest sous chef doing right now? My smallest sous chef? Yep, your smallest he's, sous chef. <laughs> he's offering emotional support right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, in, in, in a couple of minutes, he's about to start um, cutting up the uh, Brussels sprouts to get those ready. Oh, I love Brussels sprouts. What are, are you doing anything special with them? What's your plan? So we're gonna we're gonna fry off the Brussels sprouts, and as soon as those come out, we're gonna toss them in honey, a little bit of lemon, mm. and some grated Parmesan cheese. I'm just gonna go and come right over and try those, okay? <laughs> as long as you're six feet away, not a problem. No problem. You can just put them in your mailbox. Kelly, you're the deal. Why don't you tell them what they're doing? Are you getting this belly fat? Like, are you thinking this through? Are you using any savoriness, like? Did you personally think this through? Is this why you're a chef and I'm not? <laughs> uh, a, a little bit. I spent a little bit of time thinking about it. Uh, when, when, when I read in the email that it was going to be a competition, I might have thought a little bit about it. I mean, he prepared an hour and a half prior, Nick, so I don't know. No, no. I'll be honest with you guys. I've been preparing only since 1 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> only since 1 o'clock. Nick, how long have you been preparing? Like, I don't know, 2.30, so... Okay. If I, at least have that excuse. <laughs> well, both of you, you know, if we could invent smell of vision, I would be, I can kind of smell Nick's because we're well over six feet away, but as you can see by my background, I am in my house. This is not my pantry. So I can smell what's happening over there. I can smell what's happening in Nelly's kitchen as well. So my pork chops are uh, done searing. Time to start the sauce. You can see I got nice oil to spawn. I'm going to put in uh, chopped onion, get this cooking down. Yeah. <laughs> Fried onion, nothing smells better. You know what, my feelings on onions are... <laughs> well, nice. I'm going to let Marnie explain to you guys how she's making the apple slaw right now. <laughs> Sarah, how are you? I'm enjoying this Pinot. I didn't even swap it out for a cab. <laughs> so right now I'm preparing the, uh, the slaw. 
for this, and um, we, I actually just did the the panel, and they we wanna slice them into like really really thin. Um, you know, every chef at the resort we would we would normally use the uh, professional grade mandolin, but there are also um, ones that are, they sell in stores that actually have the guard for them for for uh, people that are you know not that um. That, that that are good with using this mandolin because they're very very they could be very very dangerous so they sell the ones that have the guard or they actually have the gloves you know so that you can um, slice everything as thin as you want them to be and I already have the uh, panel in there nice and thin and next I will be doing the carrots the tips of the carrots And we're just doing this nice and thin. So remind us what's all going in this jar while you're getting it ready. What was that again? What's all going in the slaw that Marvie's Marvie's pre preparing? What's all going in the slaw? It's gonna get um fennel, carrots, the apples, uh sister set, a little bit of um um mint. Basil, chives, and garlic, and we're gonna throw in a little bit of uh, vinegar and uh, seasoning, salt and pepper. That sounds delicious. <laughs> well, you go and eat a Cran Geneva, because <laughs> I don't have that many ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that what everybody has in their pantry? What, Nelly? Isn't this what everybody has in their pantry? Oh yeah. You guys, I'm, I'm, I'll be 100% honest with everybody. We had nothing in our pantry until this happened. Literally nothing. We had some uh, almond milk because uh, we, uh, Jacob doesn't drink milk. We had almond milk, um, some non-dairy uh, vanilla uh, sugar-free creamer, coffee, <laughs> and um, I think it's the Kellogg's chocolate cereal in our, in our pantry and our fridge and some hard boiled and some eggs prior to all of this. I've spent more on groceries the last three weeks than they have in an entire year. So. Maybe we should have done a competition where we just made you cook with whatever you had and see what you could come up with with that almond milk and cereal. <laughs> well, that was three, three weeks ago that it would have been. Now, now we got a full pantry, let me tell you. I think okay. one day I spent about 70 some dollars on just spices. Oh. <laughs> Man. I, I hear you though. I think right now a lot of people are spending a whole lot on groceries. I am having my children home around the clock, my husband home a lot more. We're spending a whole bunch on groceries. This is running up the bill. Let's be honest. <laughs> it's Elliot. It's my four year old running up the bill. <laughs> well, it's the only thing you can spend money on. If, if you're not, if, 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 if I, I buy groceries and then I'm, I'm buying stuff online and now I just gotta turn, I gotta turn that off because I start saving some money. <laughs> Nick, what's this happening? This being delicious. All right, so my, uh, my sofrito, I softened the onions, added the garlic. Garlic needs to cook in the searing for about a minute. Don't want to overcook that. Uh, then I added in the red pepper because I want to keep it a little crispy. I want it to cook, but still be a little crispy because I want a little crunch to this dish. And then uh, the red pepper is not part of the original Spanish dish. I just like a little bit of extra on top. I like a little bit of crunch. I think it's a good way to bring crunch to the dish. Uh, then put in about two cups of chopped tomatoes. Uh, just gonna season it a little bit more. Salt and pepper, you can never have enough salt or pepper. What I love about tomatoes, is they bring both acidity and savoriness to a dish. Uh, if you ever taste a dish and you think it lacks flavor, the two things you can always add are lemon or tomato paste. Those are great things you can add to make your dish a little brighter, a little bit more flavorful. So we're just going to let this cook for about two minutes. Then we're going to add the pork chops back in, cover it up, and let's cook uh, on a low heat for about 15, 20 minutes until everything's cooked through. And then we'll have our, uh, our sofrito and pork chops ready to go. Nice. And I do have to say, I'm a fan of Andrew O'Brien. 
Everybody, listen up. We're going to do basket cooking. She says I get to decide the ingredients. So I'm telling you guys, I watch a lot of Chopped, a lot of Top Chef, Master Chef. I'm not good at cooking. So I'm going to pick crazy ingredients and maybe stay tuned. Maybe we'll add that on here if you guys will watch it. I'm game. I mean, I don't have to cook it, right? This dish also needs a little bit of wine, so I added in about a cup of wine. Oh, what, so Nick? I, you can't just the mystery basket competition. Minor detail. <laughs> what kind of wine did you add in, Nick? I added in cheap leftover Cabernet from the other night. Excellent. Uh, I know everybody says only cook with wine you would drink. I totally disagree with that. Okay. You are, you're cooking out all the things that are flavorful. Just uh, use wine. You're using it for a little bit of fruit and a little bit of acidity. You cook off the alcohol. You cook off a lot of the flavor. So, cheap wine. <laughs> but don't use cooking wine. That stuff is garbage. Yeah, he's he's changing the topic away from the mystery basket. So, you're getting called out about that, Nick. <laughs> okay, Marvy so, has a talk coming up. Culinary school. I'll get my bucket. Marvy has a talk coming up. I am now at the earth. So you wanna. Like slice the herbs thinner, not to uh, chop them up too much because then you lose the herbs and you lose all the flavor when you do and they become this ugly green herb. And you know, herbs herbs is what will bring up the dish, will give it more um of a, a brighter flavor, more fresh flavor to you know any of the dishes that you do. You know, in Grand Geneva, we we use a uh, enormous amount of herbs. You know, because it it. It um it uh, complements the dish. It, it ends the dish that you uh, that you're actually uh, making. So so no. don't you know when we use uh, when you use herb, you know don't be shy in using it. So the herbs that we have here, we have a little bit of mint, we have some chives, we have some uh, basil that we put in there. All just a little bit of uh, herbs to accent it. Jacob is cutting up the Brussels sprouts right now. He's cutting them up into quarters. Because they were they were a little bigger, um, the pork belly is just about done. I'm about to pull it out. I seared both sides of it. I'm letting it finish off on the other side. Um, I'm panicking right now. Jacob's <laughs> using a knife to cut the Brussels sprouts, but he just got one more left. We're in the clear. Um, but uh, if you could smell the aromatics on the pork belly as all those spices are coming off of it as it sears in the cast iron, it's just beautiful. I mean the 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 the, um, the entire kitchen and and living room area, dining room, whatever you call this little area that we have right in here, you can smell the 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 richness of the pork and the beautiful aromatics of the cinnamon, the clove, the the nutmeg, the um, that that that's all on the pork belly. And then I'm standing right here next to Marvie as you know she's um, uh, julienning and mincing up the. Um, the mint, the chives, I can smell the fresh fennel, the apple. Um, and she's about to get the zest off of the, uh, it's actually, it's a, it's a halo. I love halos. Um, I have breakfast, I have lunch, I have dinner, and then I have meals in between both of them. And in between all of those meals, I have one or two of these, the little <laughs> halo. But we're gonna use the zest for, for this, and then we're gonna use the zest of lemon juice, and we're gonna toss that in a little bit of vinegar and with that as well for the slaw um, to finish that up. and. Um, uh, add, a, add a little bit of seasoning of salt, of salt to that as well. So, um, Nick, I'll let you go ahead. I'm about to pour my first on. Nick, I've got a quick question before you get to plating up there. Um, oh, we're not plating. Yeah, this oh. got down for a little bit. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was distracted. I was really into Nelly describing how good it probably smells in his house right now. Yeah, I mean, so, um, my Wednesday nights are not this good. What the heck is going on, Nelly? Sorry, I jumped ahead. <laughs> um, but Sarah is asking, how long can an open bottle of wine keep either for drinking or for cooking? Is this my wife, Sarah? Not your wife, Sarah. <laughs> my wife, Sarah, knows the answer is drink, drink it tonight because drink it's gone. Drink it all the night, Sarah. Um, so open bottle of wine can stay for, if it's a newer vintage, um, three to four days. Ways to save it are definitely put the cork back on. Uh, if you put it in the refrigerator, especially if it's red wine, actually, it'll stay longer that way. Uh, three to four days for for drinking, you should be fine. It will oxidize a little bit, which is you get a little bit of um, evaporation, concentrates the flavor a little bit more. Four days is usually going to be fine. For cooking, a month 
Um, beyond that, you start getting vinegar, which isn't the greatest thing unless you want red wine vinegar. Um, but three to four days to drink. If you only have this much left in the bottle, just toss it because there's so much air um, compared to the amount of wine. It's not going to work. You get two glasses, you can drink the other two glasses the next three to four days. That's good advice. Okay, so Nick, what's happening in your pan? I'll let you chime in since we're trying. So my pan, uh, we brought everything to a boil. We let it cook down a little bit, uh, reduced heat to a low simmer, and uh, put the pork chops back in, and we're just going to let the sauce cook down. Let the pork chops move all the way through for about, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Uh, want the pork chops to be 145 degrees when they're uh, give or take. Most people, I watched a thing today, and some people in very fancy test kitchens said pork chops are the worst cut of pork and they're wrong. Uh, the problem is most people overcook their pork. Uh, pork is cheaper than chicken, cheaper than beef, super flavorful. Uh, just don't overcook it. If you cook it to 145, cook it like a steak. It's going to be super delicious. You can do any season you want it. It's like all the best parts of beef and uh, chicken combined. So we're just going to let this cook for a little bit. And then we're going to have uh, a really nice dinner. We're going to put it over some rice, uh, a little bit of parsley. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I promise. Okay. So Marvie's finishing up on her slaw. Does it look like we're going with salt and pepper right now, right? Yeah. All right. Just, uh, about a teaspoon of a um, little bit of salt in it, a little Who's bit of uh, um, black pepper. You guys, I don't want to brag or anything, but holy Toledo, look at that baby. Oh, I don't want to brag. It isn't beautiful. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that looks um, nice, Nelly. <laughs> I am done. Just <laughs> stick a fork in me. <laughs> Lord. Chef Nelly, man. All right, Chef. Here's a real question. What do you? What shoes are you wearing tonight? Are you, you got shoes uh, on? You're gonna like this. So I thought about it. Like, let me tell you. So I bought these gorgeous boots from from this one. Uh, they're called Cast Boots. Oh, and, I need to go. Chef. and I paid way more than I should have, and I got in a lot of trouble for buying them. But I almost put them on tonight. But I've been in tennis shoes all day. But let me show you. You gotta see them, bro. These pants are pretty legit. Beto, I need you. I need you to help out with the camera, bro, because I don't know if I can. Get your leg all the way up here. <laughs> can you? Can you guys? Can you? Can you, can you guys see this spot? <laughs> yeah, man. They're not the boots, but these are. Can you see it or no? I can see it. Woo! I'm in tennis shoes today. The next right. thing we do, I'm gonna pull out the boots. I got these shoes. They're Tivas. They're from Clearwater Outdoor, downtown Lake Geneva. Shout out to Sean Payne. Uh, Great job. I, they're not as cool as yours, Nelly, but I'm trying. Maybe you guys should explain that um, why we're asking about shoes. Nick, maybe you should let people know why. <laughs> well, the chef has the coolest shoes. Uh, he's got great aprons and great shoes. Yeah. Uh, do you have an Instagram about you? And good hair. Good hair. And good hair. I'm gonna wash my hands after I touch my shoes. So these are all important things when cooking. Good hair, great apron, nice shoes. So we're still working on the delicious food. Nick is washing his his shoes off of his hands. And it looks like Nelly's busy in his kitchen with his sous chef team. <laughs> so how are the Brussels sprouts coming, Nelly? Brussels sprouts, I'm pulling them out right now. All so right. When you try the Brussels sprouts, don't be afraid to get a little color on them. You know? Um, Fry them, you know. Um, get your oil nice and hot. Um, just when you pull them out, get them nice and strange. You want to get brown on them. You want them to get a nice um. You want them to get a nice little brown on the outside of them, so they feel a little green. I don't steam them ahead of time. I used to steam them ahead of time and then and then drop them in the deep fryer. But um, I learned that as long as you that as long as you still drop them in the uh, drop them in the deep fryer. Um, enough time that the inside gets a beautiful color still and that they cook more than well enough. So now that they're out of the fryer, I'm going to pour a little, I'm going to get a little seasoning on them right away. I'm going to get some honey on top of them. Can you pass me the honey? Honey? You didn't see you're having honey. Now yeah, add a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a honey right over the top. What are they frying? What was that? 
How long were the Brussels sprouts frying? I would say, I think three minutes that loud noise was, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> about, about three minutes. You want them to get a nice brown. Yeah. Um, but still be able to see the green on them. Don't be shy with the honey because Brussels sprouts, let's be honest, anybody that, that is going to try to tell me that, oh, Brussels sprouts are so delicious, I plain or not. I love Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are not delicious, Brussels plain. Sprouts. They're not savage, guys. Um, now, um, what honey are you using? So I'm using um, Jim's Got Hives Pure Raw Honey. This is um, from the southern uh, Wisconsin. Okay, nice. So we've got a lot of fans right now that are watching that are all about supporting local. So thank you guys. Um, they love Nick's shout out about our local shopping. So appreciate the local honey shout out also. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean? It's, it's, um, I was at the store the other day and I made sure that I was using, that I was using, that I was using local, local Wisconsin honey. Um, is that local honey. Parmesan? No, that's not local Parmesan. Like Parmesan really should be. There's some things, Nick, that, you know, I'm a firm believer should be local. There's some things that are just, when they're good, they're good. And, you know, a lot of Parmesan right here. We're going to grate some Parmesan right on top of the Brussels sprouts. Oh, my goodness. I could just yeah. eat the Brussels sprouts by themselves. I knew I was going to get smoked. I, I don't smoked. know. Can you guys see that right in there, Oliver? Camera guy, can you see that? Oh, I see that. We see it, but that, oop, there you go. That's better. That's yeah. It. All right. So I'm about to. We're about to plate up our dish. I mean. All right. So I did the um, puree earlier today. So what is this puree? So I boiled. I boiled the sweet potatoes. Once um, they were done, I had this really beautiful um, pear chutney uh, left over in my uh, fridge. So I added that to it, a little bit of evaporated milk to it, some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper as well. So, so gave that a nice pretty. We do have, um, Diane is requesting that your third chef gets some camera time too. I'm just saying, no pressure. Jacob, come here, bro. Come here, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Jacob has some fans out here. Jacob, all right, Jacob, Jacob's gonna do the Brussels press, all right? Awesome. <laughs> Can you say hi to everybody out there? Hi. Hi, Jacob. Good job with those Brussels sprouts. Thank you. Those look awesome. Um, we also have some comments, and I think I agree that N Team Nelly might need to be renamed to Sneakers, Aprons, and Good Hair. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Ready? We're going to put that right in the middle. Grab it with both fingers like this. I'll put the first one, and then we'll put the next one. Okay? Set that piece right there. <laughs> Jacob, we've got some people online that are saying hi to you, so thanks for being here. <laughs> nice job. And then you're going to finish it with a little bit of coleslaw. So now we've got that delicious slaw going on now? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to put some of the slaw right on top of, right on top of both of them, Jacob. Here you go. Put that right on top of both of them. Right on top of both of them. There you go. Nice. Nick, we've got Jacob out here plating this dish, so no pressure. Ready? No pressure. My kids are seven year old. <laughs> Not the first time. Probably won't be the last time. <laughs> Next time you gotta just do you have to do your cooking, Nick, while you're wearing Simona, I think. I mean I'm <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she just tries to grab too many things. <laughs> He's very into cheers right now. Today is her six month birthday. Happy New Year for happy year, baby girl. We love you. Love a little more. Um, I do want to let you know, Nelly, a very important fan, my mom, is listening and she wants Jacob to know that his hair also looks nice and neatly combed. <laughs> you hear that, Jacob? Thank you. Oh, you're there welcome. You go. <laughs> there you go. Hold up the plate now. Good thing you want to grab the camera. Um, can can the of these delicious dishes. Cassandra's asking. <laughs> what? Yeah, hold the plate like this. What oh, yeah, Nick, do we have delicious curbside delivery for these dinners you're making right now? I don't know, Cassandra, how much money you have. Give me 30 <laughs> minutes. Maybe we All can right, make guys, it. Check out, check out the dish. Oh, look at that. 
What do you think, Nick? I think my butt's kicked. Guys that are watching, what do you think of that awful dish? <laughs> All right. Nick's so I'm going with a little bit more family style plating. I got a big old bowl of rice. I think paella. Look, get the uh, chops on top of each other like this. Peppers. Hello. I was trying to get Jacob to give you guys a wink, but he got a little camera side. <laughs> I think that's gonna seal the deal right there. <laughs> Nick's pleading family style though, so I don't know. I'm all about family style when we're allowed to eat with our family and friends again. That's the best way to go. I, I hear a little, a little, a little bias with them over there. Nick thinking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm the paycheck on that side. He does but. pay me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think there's. I, I think family style and sharing is one of the greatest things to do. I think that that's what eating is. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of sharing. You know, when we go out to eat, um, I always say, Marvie and I, and and Jacob, and even Oliver, even. Doesn't matter who I go out to eat with. We always end up ordering enough food for three times the amount of people that 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 were with them. We can end up sharing everything that we order and taste it together. Because yeah, um, yeah. it's just it's, it's a great way to taste the menu. And it's a great way to eat, and it's a great way to keep communication open, and it's a great way to carry on great conversation. And that's the beautiful. That's the beauty about eating, and um, one of the one of the fun things about um, food as well. I got a picture of this. I'm a millennial. You guys, can I have both Team Nick and Nelly show your dishes one more time to the camera so everyone can see them? Look at those beautiful dishes, you guys. Awesome job. We have been getting a lot of great feedback from everybody that's listening, so thank you, or watching and listening. Thank you so much at how beautiful both of these dishes look and lots of requests for curbside delivery for both of them. <laughs> All right, so what you got going on right now, Chef? Uh, Grand Geneva, you guys aren't there, but you're working on some uh, Pretty awesome ideas for when you come back bigger and better than ever, right? A hundred percent, brother. I mean, uh, every day we're working on. Uh, um, I just finished uh, the golf menu, the pool menu. Um, looking and working on the Grand Cafe, the Brasago, and the Chop House menu. Uh, working on those. Uh, we're finalizing our uh, catering and wedding menu as well. Um, you know, really working on keeping ourselves busy, and um, you know, this gives us that quiet time. Um, you know, that to be able to really focus in on uh, those menus, wish it wasn't in this facet as everybody else does as well, you know, but, you know, we need to take everything as it is and um, uh, use the opportunities for the best uh, of our abilities. But, you know, we're going to come out, we're going to come out on top of this. And, um, you know, like you said, it'd be better, it'd be better than ever before and do some really fun stuff. You know, we've uh, been doing some really cool stuff here at the house to um, take back out on, at the resort with us and uh, be able to share with everybody there where, we're really excited and looking forward for this to be done. And um, like I like I said when I did my uh, little segment last week or however long ago that was, you guys are probably be watching continue to support the local restaurants and uh, shops that are still open. It's super important. It's really important that we co that we continue to do that, especially in these times, and more so important when we're allowed to go back out and when we're allowed to go back and dine. You know, um, continue to support everybody and support one another and. You know, please make sure you guys get back out to the Grand Geneva um, once we open our doors back up as well. Um, and let's continue to support one another and continue to share the love and um, the support that we've been, uh, everyone's been showing. I think it's been really beautiful the way that everyone's uh, been uh, um, um, supporting and uh, caring for one another in this time. I think that's a really great thing that's been seen. Yeah, thank you so much. I couldn't agree more, you guys. And we will put up a little post about this. Um, we had a request for the recipes. So if I can get those from both chefs, we'll get everything posted. And thank you all for watching and listening and paying attention and having some fun with us tonight. For sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in.